Let's speak now to Nick Thomas-Simmons, Shadow Minister without Portfolio, senior, senior Labour MP, of course. Nick, I have to say, looking at what has made news today, it's been Nigel Farage's decision not to stand and Rishi Sunak's inability to understand that Wales hasn't made it through to the Euros. We haven't heard much from Labour. Labour's message, Labour's big campaign launch in Kent, it has not cut through. Well, look, be, before I come to that, I should say it's very disappointing that the, and I say this as a Welshman, that the Prime Minister didn't realise that the Welsh football team hadn't qualified for the Euros, which is, of course, a, a source of great disappointment to all of us. But, it, look, in terms of uh, the campaigning today, I think our campaign has started very well. Keir Starmer spoke uh, last night, first of all, responding to the Prime Minister, setting out that the moment has come where we have an opportunity to turn the page on the years of Tory chaos, the five Prime Ministers, the seven Chancellors of the Exchequer, the nine Education Secretaries, and to genuinely vote for change. And I think that message continued today with the visit down to uh, Gillingham Football Club. So we're pleased, Tom, with how the campaign is going so far, but there's a long way to go. It's, the election is six weeks today. It's going to be mm. a long and gruelling campaign, but we are very much up for it. Nick Thomas-Simmons, Gillingham Football Club, a lovely venue though it was, did not make big headlines. Um, the speech was pretty run-of-the-mill from Keir Starmer. I put it to you that your leader is running a deliberately boring campaign. He doesn't want people to talk about Keir Starmer. He wants the others to scrap it out and to yeah. win by default. No, I think that's completely uh, a mi complete mischaracterisation of it. That, that's wrong. First of all, by the way, Keir Starmer most definitely is not boring. I've known Keir Starmer for many, many years. Witty, uh, great company. But he's also, by the way, a serious politician for the very serious challenges of our time. We've seen the damage that unserious politicians do to our country. The 49 days of Liz Truss where my constituents and people up and down the country still paying the cost of that as they come off fixed-rate mortgage deals and see their new offers being significantly higher. We know what the cost of living crisis is still doing up and down the country. What we Nick, now Nick need Thomas is Simmons. that serious politician for serious Most times. economists would not say that today's interest rates have anything to do with the events of October. 2022. Uh, economists across the political spectrum, across the ideological spectrum, some will say that immediate effects in October 22 had an effect, but today interest rates bear almost uh, no bearing on those events. Indeed, they're around the same rate as the European Central Bank in, in Europe, the Federal Reserve in the United States, the Bank of Canada in Canada, indeed the Australian Central Bank as well. All of these banks have interest rates around 5%. Why are you blaming the Tories for that? Well, it, it, it's a novel idea if the Conservative Party is going to go into an election trying to claim, after 14 years in power, that the state of the economy is nothing to do with them. I think we can clearly That's not see what I said, Nick Thomas Simmons. I said that interest rates, which are set by the independent Bank of England, a Bank of England that has not been under political control since Tony Blair came in in 1997, day one of New Labour, took that out of political control. Now, we can talk about economic growth, separate issue, control of the government, interest rates, control of the Bank of England. But, but it... But you are enti you're entirely right to say that there is an independent central bank and you're entirely right to say that that was introduced as a measure for economic stability in the early days of 1997. But of course, when the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee sets interest rates, they have to take into account the overall economic picture mm. of the country. And it's frankly absurd to suggest that that is nothing to do with the Conservative Party. But the point Are you that denying I'm that interest rates today today are not out of line with interest rates in the United States? Or in the European Central Bank? Uh, the, well, the, the, the interest rate that, that we currently have, of course, you're talking about the position in other countries, but mm -hmm. we can't have this situation where, for example, a couple of, a couple of years ago we had, what, uh, inflation at 11%. The Prime Minister, the Conservative Party, claim it's nothing to do with them. They claim it's to do with international factors. When we had the inflation figures uh, noted the other day, the Prime Minister's then trying to claim it is something to do with him. So you can't have it both ways. And my well, point neither is, can you. 14 years, this is not a one-term... 
This is not a one... No, no, I'm having it one single way that 14 years into a Conservative government, the economic situation of this country, they bear responsibility Sorry, Nick Thomas Simmons, you're saying interest rates, argument. which are the responsibility of the Bank of England, are the responsibility of Rishi Sunak, but uh, inflation is somehow in, not under Rishi Sunak's control because it's come down. You you seem to having you're, you're having it both ways. You're saying the good economic no, no, indicators no, no. are nothing no, to do no, with the government no. and the bad ones are all their fault. No, no, I'm sorry. One single proposition, Tom. 14 years into a Conservative government, the economic state of the country they bear responsibility for. Now, that shouldn't be a controversial issue. 14 years in, can we name one public service, one single public service that is in a better condition than they found it in 2010? And when I'm out up and Education. down the country, have been, of course, we had the local and mayoral elections, it, uh, the local and mayoral uh, elections on the doorsteps. Do people feel better off after 14 years of Conservative government? And I can tell you, the answer I'm getting back on the doorsteps is most certainly not that they are. Now, I think it's a strong case that you make. Of course, we're seeing this uh, incumbent effect in many countries around the world. And uh, no doubt we'll be looking forward to see what your party has to say on wider economic uh, policy as the campaign goes on. But for now, Nick Thomas-Simmons, really appreciate your time here.